Saluki football's all-time passing leader is next for entrance to the Saluki Hall. We, all, we will also induct the best running quarterback in Saluki history. We will induct the winningest quarterback in Saluki history. We will induct the only Saluki quarterback with three conference championships. We will also induct the only Saluki to quarterback three playoff teams. This is just one person, Joel Samberski. Six feet tall, still. Skinny, still. Right-handed, still. Long-haired, formerly. <laughs> Durable, only one time in his 49-game career did he leave a game with the game still in the balance. Stereotyped as a running quarterback, still, in a program that never passed the ball, still stereotyped that way, despite the stats to the contrary, the all-time passing leader. A quarterback nobody else in Division I wanted out of high school, somebody hell-bent, despite the odds, to do everything in his power to revitalize the Saluki program that was on the verge of extinction. Plenty of players have cared in the 34 years I've been around Saluki football. Plenty have cared, but no Saluki football player in my 34 years, truly cared more about Saluki football's place in the world, and nobody did more to truly affect its place in the world than our final inductee. Ladies and gentlemen, a rare first ballot Saluki Hall of Famer, Joel Samberski. Mike, um, thank you very much for the kind introduction. You know, since my football career ended, I've had the honor of working with Mike Reese and, and Gene Green on the radio the last six years. And since my induction into the Hall of Fame became public, I've been stopped on the street two or three times and, and simply asked if I was going into the Hall of Fame as a radio announcer or as a quarterback. <laughs> and you're laughing because you listen to the broadcast, which we appreciate. Truth is, I've, I've learned a lot from, from Mike Reese and Gene Green. And Gene, one of the things he's taught me is to try to be brief with my analysis. And that is an area I'm still trying to improve upon. One of the first lessons Mr. Michael Reese taught me is that I shouldn't say great as much as I do, such as that was a great throw or that was a great play. Because I learned if I say great on just a good play, but then a truly great play occurs, I'm left without a word to describe that play. So everything then just becomes great. That's just some of the wisdom I picked up from Mike Reese and Gene Green the last six years. I first want to congratulate the rest of the Hall of Fame class of 2012. It's an honor to share this privilege with five really quality people. I also want to thank Brad Taylor for working his tail off to make sure this is a, a night that I know I'll never forget. Being inducted into SIU's Hall of Fame is a tremendous honor, and it's an honor that I accept with gratitude. Uh, I'm truly thankful the university is recognizing my achievements in football. And it was about this time, 10 years ago, that an 18-year-old kid, and I mean kid, from Liberty, Missouri signed his letter of intent to be part of Jerry Kill's first recruiting class. Southern Illinois was not even on my radar in the winter of 2000. I was told by Terry Allen, then head coach of Kansas, that at 175 pounds, I simply didn't have the size to play at the Division I level. The offensive coordinator at Missouri State told me he didn't think that at six foot, I was tall enough to play at the 1AA level. So I was left to be recruited by many Division II coaches in the MAIA conference, and one of those coaches was Coach Kill. He originally recruited me to play for him at Emporia State. Now I have to say that if Coach Kill cheated, and he didn't, I promise you, but if he did, 
there's not a car nice enough he could have given me to play in Emporia, Kansas. Wait, this is going online? Is that what? <laughs> but everything changed when SIU Athletic Director Paul Kowalczyk hired Jerry Kill. And on that day, Coach Kill's offensive coordinator, Matt Limegrover, forced his way on my front porch at about 10 o'clock at night. My dad kindly welcomed him, but informed him that I already committed to play at Northwest Missouri State. And Northwest Missouri had some good selling points. One, they were a Division II powerhouse. They won two national championships the previous two years. It also didn't hurt that it was an hour from home and it was my father's alma mater. But with some pleasant persistence from Coach Lime Grover and the fact that my dad is one of the kindest, kindest people on earth and hates telling people no, the next thing I remember, Coach Lime Grover went from my porch to the living room. And he told me that they just took the job at SIU, and he wanted me to come and take a visit. And I literally never heard of Southern Illinois University. I'd never heard of Carbondale. I don't think, frankly, Coach Lime Grover had either. He didn't have any literature. He didn't have any stats about it. <laughs> I think he was still wearing his Emporia stuff. <laughs> but I decided to take a visit. And when I did, I absolutely fell in love with the community and the university. And it was. Uh, during that trip that I really got to know an incredible coach and, uh, and the rest of his staff. And I also came to realize the incredible opportunity that existed in Carbondale. See, instead of being plugged into a national powerhouse program, I had the chance to be part of a team that would set out to accomplish the impossible, a winning season. And on that drive back to Liberty, Missouri, I decided to become a Saluki. And you know, guys, things were very different then. The football program had only two winning seasons since 1983. There was little support for the program. Good old McAndrew Stadium was terrible. We didn't have lights. We had AstroTurf. And I found out my first year that it was a point of pride for many uh, students that the tailgates would be more attended than the football games. The weight room, no exaggeration, was the worst I've ever seen. My high school weight room was probably five times bigger and quite a bit nicer. And that first year in 2001, thank God Coach Kill redshirted me, we lost 10 games. There were many off the field issues with guys getting in fights, not going to class, just not doing the right things. And yet Coach maintained his faith. He taught us what was right and what was wrong, and then he held us accountable. Coach never wavered in his conviction of what he felt we could achieve together. Coach Keel taught us all how to work. I mean, my teammates flat out knew how to work. And you know, some guys that didn't want to be here after that first year, they ended up leaving. But the vast majority of the guys hung in. And after his first year, Coach Keel was left with a bunch of guys who worked like crazy, that did the right things, and they started to view Saluki football as a, uh, as a privilege. Coach Kill taught my teammates and I how to fight through adversity. You know, that's an important lesson to learn when you lose 10 games. Coach Kill taught us how to believe in each other and simply refuse to give up. And you all know the rest of the story. In three years, Saluki football went from worst to first. Instead of finding ways to lose games, we actually found ways to come back and win them. We won three conference championships, went to the playoffs three years in a row, and completed one of the most remarkable turnaround stories in all of college football. And I know that the reason I'm standing here today has much less to do with my physical abilities. It has little to do with my arm strength or accuracy. I'm going to the Hall of Fame because of the great, and I do mean great accomplishments, of the teams that I happen to be a part of. The truth is, if my teammates didn't work relentlessly, if they didn't ignore the critics, ignore the attendance, believe in Coach Kill, find a way to believe in each other, we would have never put Saluki football back on the map. And frankly, if that doesn't happen, I'm not standing here tonight. 
nor is that brand new shiny stadium or that state-of-the-art weight room. When I look back at my years at Southern, I see that I was part of a much bigger story than me. It's much bigger than my accomplishments. So Coach Kill taught me a lot more about life than football. And the truth is I loved my college professors, many of whom I'm still friends with today, but it wasn't in Finance 101 that taught me how to fight through adversity and never give up. It wasn't my Accounting 260 class that I learned how to grow into a man that deeply respects people and truly loves his teammates. It was time spent on the practice fields, not Pulliam Hall, where a white kid from the suburbs of Kansas City would become a dear friend and roommate with a black kid from inner city Detroit. See, unfortunately, many kids grow up in a single family home with no father, and I'm very, very fortunate to have two mothers and fathers. My biological mother and father, Gary and Teresa, who from the time I was born, helped raise me into a young man of faith that possesses the integrity to do the right thing. I grew up in a loving home with two brothers, Josh and Evan, and my sister Olivia is very supportive of me. I literally owe my life to, to Josh. He saved my life when I was four years old because I locked myself in the trunk of our car. <laughs> I truly could not have had a better family growing up. And then when I was 18, my parents had the courage to hand me off to another set of parents, and that's Jerry and Rebecca Kill. Coach Rebecca and I developed a bond that only a family can share. And Mike talked about it. I'm, I am lucky enough to own a few records at SIU, but the biggest accomplishment was convincing my wife, Samantha, to marry me. And I'll never forget the first time I saw her. She was in the weight room. One of the guys was hitting on her. <laughs> Coach, they weren't too focused that day. <laughs> but I, not being very impressive in the weight room, decided that wasn't the right place to make my move. Instead, I waited until I had a couple of beers in me at a bar. <laughs> and you know, years later, we now have a, a wonderful little girl, Lainey. And I am uh, so thankful that she's going to grow up in a home in which she has an incredible example of what a woman with integrity looks like. Finally, I want to thank all the fans who are part of this incredible story. Many sat at the at the crumbling McAndrew Stadium, despite our records. Many of you here tonight. This is truly a great, and Mike Reese, there's no better way to describe this than as a great honor. And I'm very thankful to get to share it with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Congratulations.